welcome. What uh, I'm going to talk about has been known and called the holy science for thousands of years. In fact, um, Egypt is probably the home of the holy science. And um, <clears throat> what the holy science is, is the sun being the holiest of the planetary bodies in our solar system. And the OL in the word holy comes from the original name for the sun, Elohi um, Elios. So basically what it is, is the science of the soul and the stars. Uh, the Hindus have been teaching the holy science in Hinduism based on the uh, the, um, the Yuga cycle of 24,000 years. And I'll, I'll read a little portion out of this book about that in a minute. But the book I work mostly out of is Marcus Manilius, Astronomica. He was the astronomer and astrologer to Caesar Augustus. And this guy is probably the least uh, read of all those great astrologers and people who taught this, like Ptolemy and um, the original founders of the science back in Egypt and uh, Babylonia. But Marcus Manilius calls it the holy science. I'll just read the uh, introductory words of his beautiful poem. I will finish with some of the most inspiring, inspirational words you will ever read out of any poem written by a human. And it will intoxicate you for what they knew about the science of our ascension back to where we came from which is the ethereal realms the fifth ether the quintessence which Plato uh, discussed at length but just the introductory words before I uh, continue um, you God of Silene Silene is uh, Mercury, okay? You are the first founder of this great and holy science. So it's mercurial. Now, in Egypt, Mercury was Hermes, okay? So it's hermetic. What you're going to be learning tonight is hermetic. It goes back to Egypt. But the Romans knew it, the Greeks knew it, Plato, Empedocles, Pythagoras knew it. And the beautiful thing I'm going to share with you today is that now we have scientists on board who are teaching it. And Walter Crittenden, who wrote this book, is the head of the um, Binary Research Institute in California. Walter Crittenden uh, is showing how our star system is a binary and the sister star to our sun is Isis or Sirius. It's the beautiful blue star right here in Canis Major going down right now. It's the brightest star in the sky. Now, he's given a lot of evidence in here that I believe proves that we are in a binary and the binary star is Sirius. And we go around Sirius every 24,000 years. Now, he, is, he, he has honored this man who is Sri Yukteswar, who wrote this book in 1894 by mentioning him in this book and working with the holy science of the Hindu and the uh, Yuga cycle. I would just like to read something in the introduction of this book. It says, we learn from Oriental astronomy that moons revolve around their planets and planets turning on their axes revolve with their moons around the sun. And the sun with its planets and their moons takes some star for its jewel and revolves round it about 24,000 years of our Earth, a celestial phenomenon which causes the backward movement of the equinoctial points around the zodiac. Now, <clears throat> what that means is we live in a cycle and it's called the Great Year. Now, the, the Egyptians taught that in order to know who you are, you need to understand the solar system in which you live. 
The solar system is our macrocosmic atom and it has magnet, magnetic bodies that orbit around it. The core of every atom, mac macrocosmic atom in the universe is uh, structured that way. An electric core and a magnetic uh, planets that go around it, just much the same as an atom with uh, a nucleus and electrons that um, encircle the uh, nucleus. Now, what they taught was that you need to understand the three fundamental motions of the solar system. The first motion is if you have the, um, the sun there, the earth orbits around the sun in an anti-clockwise motion and it also rotates in an anti-clockwise motion. So that's the day, the rotation every 24 hours and the orbit is the year. <laughs> the third, so that's the first fundamental motion, that's the second fundament, fen, fundamental motion, and the third one is the great year, the great year of 24,000 years. Now you may have seen that the figure is 20, uh, 25,920, well that also, that's the same year, okay? Um, the reason for this figure is because, according to Walter Crutenden, as our sun orbits around a far distant star called Sirius, that's not a very good, uh, <laughs> uh, but they're supposed to be perfectly oval, oval like that, um, it takes 24,000 years for them to go around each other. Now, as they get closer to each other, they speed up. So precession is variable, okay? It's not a fixed figure. You will see that the Hindus insist that it's 24,000 years. Uh, but in Egypt, they have this figure, and they're both correct. So, but the point is, and I want to get off this and get straight into what, I, what the holy science really is, because I really uh, stress that those three cycles are uh, the cycles that the holy science is based on because these are the motions of our sun in relation to the earth. Now, is um, we all pretty familiar with precession? Yes? No? Okay. So most of the monuments, the megalithic monuments around the world were designed to align to certain points of precession because it was very, very important to monitor where we are in the stream of time. For instance, we know that we've been in the age of Pisces for 2,000 years, and now there's a changeover to the age of Aquarius coming. Well, that's because, well, that's because as we go around, as Sri Yukteswar said in the book, as we go around Sirius, we actually go, this is the dark ages because we are so far away from our sister sun. But as we head toward Sirius, we go to the Silver Age, uh, sorry, the Bronze Age, then the Silver Age, and as we are, if, when our sun gets to this point here and Sirius is at that point there, we will be close to each other, and this is the Golden Age. And uh, the, the Egyptians and the Hindus agree that this is the age that lasts the longest. And now we are heading back to that time, and what 2012 is all about is simply the fact that we are going through the equinoctial crossing of this particular cycle. And this is how it works. Our Milky Way galaxy is a spiral galaxy. We know that, but we don't see it like that. We see it like a river in the sky. And scientists say that it's about two metres long if you have it as a millimetre thick. That's how thin it is. And it's spiralling every 220 million years around and that fast that it's just the stars are in a very, very thin river. When we look up, we see it like the Milky Way, and it's not so thin, but it is. And what happens in, in this particular orbit is that our, our Earth, sun takes us in the north, to the northern hemisphere of the Milky Way galaxy and then, and then to the southern hemisphere and then back again. And it's a 
from here to here is 24,000 years. That's the cycle of precession. And it's 12,000 years in the northern hemisphere and 12,000 years in the southern hemisphere. Yang, yin, positive, negative, electric, magnetic. We are right here. And we have been crossing. If that were the Milky Way uh, equator, we have been crossing that for the last, I think, 15 years. What's 2012 is, is that our sun will be perfectly there and then it will be more north than south after the 21st of December 2012. So the question is, why aren't our governments preparing the biggest party celebration in history? Because this is beautiful. We're coming to the end of the age. And according to the holy science, when that happens, there's a harvesting of souls. Christians call it going to heaven. That's the fictional version. The real version is we ascend. And as we ascend through our, <clears throat> through Jacob's ladder, what um, I will show you with the holy science is that our solar system the seven planetary bodies that we see in our solar system are the seven chakras. And as Manly P. Hall and uh, all of these great esoteric teachers taught, we descend through the hierarchical order of these planets as a soul and we gravitate to Earth where we are living. And those planets are responsible for these energies. These are our spiritual uh, organs, the endocrine system, with the glands, the pineal gland being the master of, of the other glands, the pituitary gland and the thymus and the, and the thyroid and the heart chakra and the solar plexus. These, <clears throat> these correspond with our spiritual evolution and our transmutation. As we burst these chakras through pop proper habits, proper sexual habits, proper meditation, proper goodness and kindness and consciousness, just love, which is not what the religions are teaching. They're teaching us to be fearful of some enemies, the devil and, and all sorts of fear mongering and hell. Uh, rather than teaching this through love and humanity we can actually burst these chakras and grow and evolve and transmute and turn our lead into gold so those seven chakras are the seven planets of our solar system and they also are the seven days of the week sun sunday moon on the earth monday mercury uh, uh, mars tuesday marte marte di in latin that's Mars. Tuesday is devoted to Mars. Mercury, Mercoledì, in Latin or Italian, but it's, it's Mercury, Wednesday. The King, Zeus, Jupiter, Thor, Thursday. That's Thor, the god of thunder. Why? Because if you look at images of uh, Jupiter close up, you will see that there are thunderstorms just like the uh, hydrogen sun because they are almost the same composition. They're just gas giants. These are all gas giants. These are the only, these four little planets are the only solid ones in the, in the solar system. That's constantly thunderous, the nature of Jupiter. Therefore, that's why he's the god of thunder. Saturn, well, that's Saturn Day. That's the last visible planet. We cannot see these two planets with our eyes. So these are the seven. These seven are called the Elohim in the Bible. In Genesis when it says, let us make man in our image and let us create. It's these guys talking. The ancients believed that these bodies were not just physical entities. They have a psychic body and a spiritual body. Plotinus, Plutarch, in the, in the first centuries, the great 
Neoplatonic philosophers taught us that there are three suns. The body, the physical body of the sun, the psychic body of the sun, which teaches us that we are in the psychic consciousness of the sun. That's what we're doing. We're communicating through the psychic consciousness of the sun. And the true sun, which is the spiritual sun, the ethereal sun. The elements, according to Plato, are four. Earth, water, air and fire. And the fifth, the quintessence, ether. From ether come the visible planes. These are the, the inferior, this is the inferior world. The world of effects. This is the world of causes where everything emanates from. All the patterns, all the atomic patterns, the beautiful animals that you see, and everything are in here. The indescribable Ein Sof of the Jews, prime creator. This down here with the seven Elohim, they are the Demiurge, they are the Cosmocrators, the seven Olympians. They are the creators of the material world. So these have their correspondences in the platonic solids. There are five shapes. There are only five shapes that will fit inside a sphere perfectly. And they are the dodecahedron, tetrahedron, octahedron, icosahedron, and hexahedron. Now, <clears throat> I do have some pictures of that, but you're all from, uh, are most of you familiar with the platonic solids? No. I will show you the picture then. Thank you for being honest, and I can um, do this thoroughly. Those are the platonic solids. Okay? They are the only shapes that will fit inside a sphere and touch at every point. This one has four sides. It's a tetrahedron and it corresponds with fire. Notice I've got the correspondence there. Okay, it's very important to note the correspondence because you, you will see how the universe is made and how it works. Those platonic solids are in all the atoms. If you have a look at the periodic scale, you will see all the elements. All atoms will be either solid, liquid, gas, or what they call plasma or light or fire. All atoms. They will all do that. You can get your periodic table to tell you which ones go where, but an atom will form a molecule or, or it will be a solid or a liquid or a gas or it will be of light. Notice the correspondences. Fire, tetrahedron, light, temperature. These are the four, ele the four elements that make up 90 97, I think, 97 percent of our bodies. Our bodies are made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Notice that carbon corresponds with the molecule, the solid, the hexahedron, the earth element. So what we're beginning to notice is that all the gross stuff is here and it gets finer as it climbs back up to ether, the fire. And as it climbs back up in the breath of Brahma, as the Indians teach that the universe is a breath of Brahma, an exhalation and an inhalation. And this is how it happens. The breath comes forth from ether and manifests in the material world. And here we are. Okay? Now, let's get into the holy science and how it works, its mechanics. This is an absolute wonderful journey you will go through by discovering this science. This is a very beautiful and old map. I love maps. But this map, I, I, I struggled to find a map with this sine wave on it. Right? Now, we all... If we've done our geography, the basic thing here is that is the equator and then there is the lines that are very important called the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. Okay? And then this sine wave starts from the equator 
well, it doesn't start from the equator. It, it, it goes right around the globe. It wraps around the globe once. And it climbs up to the Tropic of Cancer, goes through the equator again, down into the Southern Hemisphere, hits the Tropic of Capricorn, and then comes back every year. So every year we get a summer followed by a winter pulse. It's a pulse, but it's a cycle. That's the cycle. And that fractal of the cycle will give you, is what we're going to deal with, and another two fractals. When you know those fractals, you will be a master of astrology. You will be a master of the holy science, because astrology and the holy science are one and the same. Now, can anyone tell me what, um, how high that the sun, that's actually the journey of the sun, of course, because of the tilt of the earth, it's 23 and a half degrees, okay? So as the, the tilt of the earth, if my fist is the sun, <clears throat> and the earth goes around at 23 and a half degrees, well, the southern hemisphere here will be in summer autumn, winter, and spring. The, the earth maintains that 23 and a half degrees every year as it goes around the sun. So in the southern hemisphere you've got summer, autumn, winter, spring, the four cardinal points. <coughs> I'd just like to show you another map. There's the, a modern map with the same sine wave. Notice the 12 segments. There's the skies, the stars, and that's the belt of the zodiac. And it begins with Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius. Why does it start with Pisces? Because we're in the age of Pisces, and there's the equinox. The equinox is happening in Pisces. Soon, after 2012, that segment will go to there, because the sun goes backwards through the zodiac every 24,000 years, because this is clockwise. These are anti-clockwise. The day and the year are anti-clockwise, which means, let's say that's east and that's west. The sun comes up in the east, sets in the west. The zodiac belt, which is in the same 17 degrees slot that the sun will always be in, they are always there in the east, faithfully, and always set in the west. So the, you, you notice the stars, if you're watching them, every 15 degrees, uh, every hour, they go 15 degrees, okay? Till they go around once, because of that. Because we're rotating, they're not moving. But we see them in the east, and they go around once. Every year, the same thing. Today, the sun has entered the sign of Taurus. Yesterday, it was in Aries. So, if you could see where the sun was, it's be 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 below our feet, beneath below, <laughs> beneath our feet at the moment. <laughs> uh, so, but it, Aries is behind the sun. The sun is in Aries. So the sign that the sun is in, you cannot see it because the sun blots, blocks those, blots the light of those stars out so you can't see them. Right now we can see this, the constellations of, um, at the moment, uh, Taurus is down of course because the sun is in Taurus. You can see um, Leo, it's beautiful. Scorpio is coming up. pass on to the next sign. What I'd like to do now is draw a graph on the board and th that's the very graph. So, there's the earth, there's the equator, there's the Tropic of Cancer, there's the Tropic of Capricorn. That's the sine wave, 
okay? Now, I've probably stretched that out a little bit more because I've got a lot of information that I've got to put in there for you. Um, <clears throat> what happens is, there's the car, that's the Equinox, and that's the Equinox. Now, Equinox... Nox is night. Equal, only on those two days, March the 21st, the Equinox, that's a very holy day. In Japan, they have a public holiday on the Equinox. It's Sakura season, the blossom season. The blossom begins at spring. Aries, the sign of the lamb. The wool of the sheep is the blossom, the white blossoms you see on the trees. It starts the season. That's the Jewish, the first day of the Jewish um, sacred year. This equinox, September the 21st, the autumnal equinox is the first day of the Jewish secular calendar. Take note, because that's when January the 21st has nothing to do with our sun directly. It's not an equinox and it's not a solstice. There's the solstices. The longest day of the year, the shortest day of the year for the Northern Hemisphere, because this is Northern Hemisphere science, okay? When the sun hits that point, it's June the 21st, Prince William's birthday. They're making a lot of fuss about that fact. December the 21st is the shortest day of the year. Winter, summer, photosynthesis, life, harvest, growth, Green, in fact, I'm going to put that in green because it'll have a great effect and you'll see why. When the sun hits the Tropic of Cancer, the sun is in Cancer. So, that's Cancer for 30 days or for 30 degrees of the pie. Then it goes to midsummer. This is spring, of course, March, summer, autumn, winter. We can also bring this around, which I'm going to do. Am I blocking out your vision? Sorry. Yeah, oh, very, very sorry. Uh, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, so, we'll go to that later, but for now we stick with this sine wave. By the way, this sine wave, <clears throat> see that, the cardinal points? That's the Holy Cross. The sine wave is also the yin and the yang, the letter S, the serpent, the wisdom of the serpent sitting on the tree. The sign of eternity, because you can go around this way too, goes round and round. And in fact, that is where the figure eight comes from. The figure eight comes from the sun above, and the sun below the horizon. If I get a chance to, I'll go through that. All the numbers come from here, all the letters of the alphabet, everything comes from here. All our religions, they're all astrotheological. All the characters in the Bible, all of them, every single character in the Bible, are one of those seven, all the 12 signs of the zodiac, all of them. Abraham, the moon, will be Sarah. Adam and Eve will be the moon. Jesus and Mary Magdalene, all of them. And all the fairy tales are based on this sine wave. Cinderella is here. Little Red Riding Hood is here. Humpty Dumpty is here. They're all here, all of them. I'm going to show you that. It's a big story. But this science, it, it, we're very fortunate to be able to have this science because it has been persecuted. Most of the martyrs of history, going back to Socrates, Seneca, um, Hypatia, Boethius, Giordano Bruno, Thomas More, they all died for teaching this. <clears throat> they weren't Christian martyrs. The heretics were people who taught the real science, the truth. The truth of who the characters in all our holy books really are. They are our, our heroes and life givers, the planets of our solar system. 
when you know the solar system, in fact, the early century Christians used to be called solar heliognostics, sun knowers, to know the sun. And in fact, that, and the Romans put a US on the end of it, that is the Hebrew word for the sun. It's yes, it's pronounced yes. <clears throat> And it comes from Jesus, and that's why we say yes, because it's positive, and the sun rises and the sun sets. Jesus, yes, yes we can, is the sun. And from that we get, yeah, the year, because who's responsible for the year? It's the yes. And the month is... Who's responsible for the month? Well, it's the moon. The minute is the moon. The hour, well, that's H-O, grab that R and put it here, and the U, put it there, and you've got Horus. Because when you ask what hour is it, you, what, where is Horus? He's on the horizon, Horus's zone. The belt of Horus is the zodiac. That's the horizon. Horace's zone. So we have all these beautiful summer months. Cancer, Leo, these are the 12 apostles, by the way. These are King, King Arthur's 12 knights. These are the 12 tribes of Israel. Leo, Virgo. When the sun goes below the equator, it goes into Libra. And around that time, September, in the Northern Hemisphere, the leaves start turning red. So the sun is going through the Red Sea. It's going down to Hades to die and be crucified on the cross. The sun gets crucified four times every year. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Four Gospels. Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius. Sagittarius with the arrow, he's the one that gets Achilles, who is the sun, in the heel. The last day of Sagittarius is the 21st of December, the shortest day of the year. That's where the sun dies. Four days later, on the 25th, we celebrate Christmas, the birthday of the sun, of yes, the year person who climbs back up that ladder when he hits, when he, the sun descends from its holy throne where its enthronement is and it gets cr crucified here and it goes down to die in December, then it climbs back up again and becomes victorious. And I'll show you that. It's just beautiful how this story is in the Bible. It's in the Bible when the children of Israel come out of the Red Sea and they go into the Promised Land and they celebrate, they celebrate the Passover, which they just did last full moon, three days ago. That was the Passover, Nisan 14. Why do they call it the Passover? Because the sun has passed over out of the Red Sea and they eat the lamb of the Passover because it's Aries. Aries is the lamb. There's Aries, the lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Why does it take away the sin of the world? Because this is forgiveness. Up here you get to live. It's photosynthesis. The opposite of live is evil. Lived. Devil. There ain't no devil that's out there that's having a war against another fictional God who's called Jehovah. <laughs> that's their fiction. This is all the evil that it's nature. Nature gives us good things and it gives us bad things. If you don't prepare for winter in the Northern Hemisphere, you will freeze to death. If you haven't got enough clothes, enough nuts and bread and berries and oil and wine in your pantry, sometimes for five months you're indoors. And if you haven't got a chimney high enough, you'll perish because the snow will destroy you. And you think, is that God doing that? No, it's, it's, it's nature. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. 
I'm going to do this, I'm going to enlarge this so I can fill in a lot of information. There's so much information here, guys, that it's just, I don't know, I don't, really don't know where to begin. I could do six hours of just all the nursery rhymes. Six hours on just fairy tales. I've got beautiful books. The myths. It explains and deciphers all of them. It's all about the sun. Every hero story. The Ennead, the Metamorphosis, the Iliad, the Odyssey. All those heroes. It's all the sun. Troy. This is Troy. And the war in heaven. In fact, right now there is a war in heaven. There are f six planets in in Five planets in Aries, minus the Sun. There's Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Venus. Big alignment. And they're, and they're all opposed, Jupiter is opposed to Saturn in, in Libra at the moment, and it's an opposition. And it's a big, big opposition. And those oppositions that they, they call oppositions and squares and trines and sextiles in uh, astrology, it's just the planets. And the wars in heaven, it's just the planets when they're opposing each other or in the wrong uh, aspects. So let me fill this out. Here you have Taurus and here we have Gemini. The sun is here at the moment. In the northern hemisphere, they've just come out of Aries. Have a look at this. Now isn't this just convenient? When the sun crosses the equator, the lamb of the wool is the blossom season. The bull tells you to take out your bull and plough the ground and harvest and, and plant the seed. Otherwise you'll miss the boat for the harvest in Virgo. The Virgo who holds the sheath of grain so that when the sun is in Virgo, you know and the virgins go out and gather the harvest. In the Virgo, this is the house of bread, Bethlehem. And you plant here, you can harvest here and you can eat here, otherwise you don't eat. Gemini. Gemini are the twins because there are twin lambs, twin goats all around the place in spring, the beautiful spring. When the sun hits cancer, it's a sidewards walking animal. Therefore, the sun has nowhere to go but to go sideways. When it hits the lion, the lion is the beast that is most typical of the sun. All solar emblems have the lion in it. That's summer, midsummer. The virgin is the harvest season. The scales of Libra are there to signify that the sun has just gone through the equinox. Equal day, equal night. It's the only two days of the year that the sun splits the day into 12 hours of day, darkness and 12 hours of light. The equinox, whereas that's the longest day of the year and that's the shortest day of the year. Scorpio, when they see Scorpio, there are only four red stars in the sky. One of them, Antares, is in Scorpio. So it's the red dragon. It's the one who, after the sun has been judged in the scales of Libra, it's the one who is standing there to bite the sun as a backbiter and kill it and, and send it to its death and betray the sun and so does Sagittarius with his arrow. That's why they are there, to betray the sun after he's judged in the scales. Scorpio is the backbiter. This, this is the Apostle Judas, the backbiter, the, uh, the betrayer, because he betrays well, he was called a backbiter because the scorpion bites with its back tail, not its front. And also, the bite of a scorpion resembles the kiss, the, lip, the two lips. If you've ever seen the bite of a scorpion, it looks like the kiss mark. That's why Judas betrays the sun with a kiss. It's all there. It's all in the sky. When you read the Bible, look up and get to know those beautiful stars. There are 12 zodiac signs, but there are also 72 other signs. Take note of that. There are 84 separate constellations in the sky. They were put there deliberately because what is up there is in your body exactly. And the zodiac goes straight through your body. See the sine wave? See where Aries is? 
Taurus Gemini, Aries Taurus Gemini. It's a fractal of this sine wave here. It's just a fractal. Every day the sun goes through your body. Aries in the head, Pisces in the feet. And every hour, every hour, because six o'clock is here, 12 o'clock is here, sunset, six o'clock is here, 12 midnight is here. S notice how the sunrise corresponds with spring. Perfect correspondence. When you know that the day is the same as the year, is the same as the body, when you know those three cycles, you are a master of astrology. That's the basis of astrology. This nature is what astrology is all about. Let me just finish that little bit there. After Sagittarius is, Aquari is a Capricorn, the goat likes to climb up the mountain. Aquarius is the wet season, January. That's when the sun gets baptised. And I'll show you that later. And then Pisces is the fishing season. Perfect agricultural correspondence. Perfect. And as I will show you, it corresponds with everything else in the myths and the legends. Here's some esoteric, esoteric charts of what I was showing. These are very, very old charts. Aries on the head, Taurus, Cancer, the chest, Gemini, the two, the two arms. See the, the arms? That's Gemini. There's another one. See all the animals going down? Scorpio, the generative organs. So we have Aries in the head, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, the lion heart. Virgo, the belly, Scorpio, the generative organs, uh, Libra, the kidneys, Scorpio, the generative organs, Sagittarius, the thighs, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. This is, I'm putting all the, the, the parts together slowly of the holy science, so you know how it all works. Everything is related to this. Astrology is the key. Astrology is the key to understanding all of the other parts, because this is also physics, as I'll show you. So, summer, this is considered to be heaven. This is considered to be hell. This is the Garden of Eden. This is outside of the Garden of Eden. The two equinoxes are two pillars, two brothers, two twins. The two twins in the Bible, uh, Jacob and Esau. Um, Cain that kills Abel. That's what they are. Um, if this is the Garden of Eden, these are the two trees. The tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why is that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Because the equinox here gives you a knowledge of good and evil. And what did God say to Adam and Eve? He says, on the day of you eating from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will certainly die. Because this is the sun. Once the sun passes there, he will certainly die as it goes down to its death. Okay, I'm just going to rub that off now and I'm going to expand that. Look, I might, it might pay to just read something uh, about the holy science, just so that um, I can clear something up about the nature of it. This is beautiful, what I'm about to read you. Um, because most people don't realise when they read the Bible what they're reading. They think that's history. That's not history. There's no real direct history in the Bible. It is mythological history. It tells you about how our solar system has gone through different phases. When there's a new heaven and a new earth, it's just the solar system. Saturn loses light, falls from heaven, that's the devil falling from heaven, because Saturn is Satan. And, and, and Satan is Saturn, and Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius down in hell. Whereas Jesus rules Leo, the sun is in Leo, that's the astrological house of Leo. So they're twins, Jesus and Satan. The sun and Saturn, because the Saturn is the boss of cold 
and he's the boss of hot in our solar system. Two polarities, yeah. He's cold as. He's about how many angst, um, uh, astronomical units is Saturn away from the sun? It's, he's freezing. If you're ever going to plan a trip, bring some jumpers, you know. <laughs> okay, so Alvin Boyd Kuhn, he was a, an occultist, esotericist, teaching the esoteric truth of the Bible and of all the myths. And the esoteric structure of the alphabet, in there he says about this science, to enforce the cryptic significance of the disclosure now to be made, it is necessary to present with the utmost brevity the fundamental meaning graph of all ancient religious literature. All. All of them. The Bibles of antiquity have, been, have but one theme, the incarnation. How we, this beautiful godly consciousness, has happened to find itself on this planet in flesh and blood and those in, in this condition of the four elements. <clears throat> How did we happen to find ourselves below ether where we come from? Unconditioned consciousness. Here we have conditioned consciousness and we have cultures and stresses and religions that are trying to impose their views on us and change them and pervert them when the truth is within. We've always known the truth. We are our own high priests and teachers. The Christ is within. It's the heart chakra and the pineal gland. And anything, anything above the infernal... Notice that that is red and that is violet. Have you heard of ultraviolet and um, infrared? Well, there it is. These are the low vibrations. This is hell. When you, and the heart chakra is the Christ. That's why you always see Christ with his arms outstretched and the heart, and his heart on his chest. So how did we find ourselves in these, the, the world of effects? Well, it's the theme of every Bible, and it says, the vast body of ancient scripture discoursed on but one subject, the descent of souls, units of deific mind, sons of God into fleshly bodies, developed by natural evolution on planets such as ours, therein to undergo an experience by which their continued growth through the ranges and planes of expanding consciousness might be carried forward to ever higher grades of divine being. These tomes of holy writ, therefore, embodied their main message in the imagery of units of fiery spiritual nature, plunging down into water and descending souls being described as sparks of a divine cosmic fire and the bodies they were to ensoul being constituted almost wholly of water. The human body is seven-eighths water. So we've come from air, from spirit, and we've got water. That's our baptism of water. And then the Bible talks a baptism of spirit and a baptism of fire to go back to the Father. <coughs> It can indeed be said that the one sure and inerrant key to the Bibles is the simple concept of fire plunging into water. That fire plunging into water. Now, it's not a, uh, an unusual concept. It's not at all. It's, um, there's the South Korean flag. Remember what I did, the yin and yang? That's red, fire, that's water, spirit and matter. Fire, earth, air and water. Fire, earth, air and water is very important in the whole, in the whole thing. Let me do this again. There's the equator, only this time this is much bigger now. Remember, the Tropic of Cancer is up here and the Tropic of Capricorn is down here and the sine wave for, before went down here, didn't it? Remember that? Now what I'm going to do is make a circular graph and that's your zodiac. This is where, this studying the fractal of the year and then the day and the body will teach you everything you need to know about the macrocosm and the microcosm as above, so below. So, there's March 
the 21st, there's September the 21st. There's June the 21st, December the 21st. Equinoxes, solstices. Longest day of the year, shortest day of the year. It's opposite here in Australia, of course. It's opposite, but it doesn't matter. The science is the same. It's, not, it's got nothing to do, and you notice I put Aries here, don't you? You might have already asked the question, hang on a minute, didn't this sign have of the celestial equator begin with Pisces and Aries is here? Yes, because it's, this is accounting for the, it's accounting for the um, slippage of precession, the great year going backwards. Remember, the 24,000 year cycle goes backwards. The daily one, the sun and the stars go from east to west. By the way, in Egypt, every 12,000 years, they've had pole reversals at the crossings of the equinoxes. Remember I said to you before, our sun is taking us through the equator of the Milky Way galaxy? Well, every 12,000 years, and there's been, there's been four of these recorded in Egypt, the sun stops, or the, uh, stops, the earth stops and the sun rises in the west instead of the, the east and it happens every 12,000 years so it's potentially something that could happen at 2012 that scientists are already talking about but that's not what I want to talk about what I want to do is this now <laughs> okay now so let's put the uh, the signs in here that we know remember this was this was Aries, do you remember that? Because that's the equator there, yeah? Okay, so that's the first month. The blossom, the bull, take out your, take out your uh, plow, right? Taurus? Scorpio, Sag, oops, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, that's the 12 signs of the zodiac. Aries is a fire sign, Taurus is earth, Gemini is air, and Cancer is water. Fire. Earth, air, water, fire, earth, air, water. It's called the quadruplicity. In Hebrew, it's yod, he, va, he, Jehovah. Fire, air, water, and earth. So God, the created, not the creator, Ein Sof, prime creator is the creator, which is an invisible, we don't know. We don't know what that invisible cause is exactly. The Bible is a great book. It's a great book for enslaving people and freeing people. If you know that the message is every single character in there, every single character, there they are. And you're going to see this. All I need is time. Okay, then there's the, mo the modality. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Okay, many people familiar with this? Astrology, yeah? No. All good? No, this is the basis of astrology. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. What is that? Well, everything that you see in the sub-ether world of effects, everything does this. It generates, it operates, and it dissolves. In Hindu they say the creator, the preserver, and the destroyer. Everything starts, does something, then stops in the molecular, the molecular world that has been hexed. There's the hex. Right, you're going to see that in a minute, what that means, right? 
It's all gonna, it's all gonna, this is like putting a, a little clock together with all the little cogs and gears and that, right? Slowly and delicately. I'm trying not to rush, but I'm trying not to miss anything. Because Mr. Cameraman over there doesn't like the way I jump from this to that and that. Because there's so much information. Sorry, man. <laughs> so, that's the quadruplicity Jehovah, the four elements that manifest in a pulse. It's three-phase pulse, generation, operation, dissolution. God is an acronym. It's not a title for our fictional God that we've invented. Generation, operation, dissolution. It is. God is one, God is two, God is three, four, seven, and twelve, which I'll show you. God is seven, God is twelve, God is a oneness. Love, God is love, God is light. That's what the sun offers. The sun offers love, light, and life. In every culture, there are the three L's. The El Lord, the Elios, in the Bible, in the Greeks call it Elios, the El Lord gives us El Love, El Light, and Life. It's the source of love, light, and life. Where else, does, where, do, where else do those three things come from? And it comes in, it, and, and then the oneness divides into a two, which is positive and negative, electricity and magnetism. There's nothing in the universe that is not electric or magnetic, nothing. It's either one or the other. There is nothing outside of electromagnetism. That's the whole process of nature. And that's where the oneness becomes electric and magnetic in three phases, three pulses, with four elements or four polarities because the atoms will polarise to either one of those. Hydrogen. Carbon goes down to Earth if carbon is a hex. In fact, the atomic number for carbon is 666. What happens when you flat pack a hex? That's a hex, isn't it? Remember we said that carbon is solid. All atoms will, be, will either be solid or have cohesion or motion or temperature because they are either photon, particle, an atom or a mo molecule. Right? And it's hex. Why is it hex? Because the ancients knew that when you flat pack a hex, You get 666, that's the cross we have died on, which is the flesh that we live in. Our spirits have died on the cross of matter. When you see Jesus on the cross, he's died on fire, air, earth and water. Fire, earth, air and water. Not in that order. I'll show you the order later, but that's what they are. That's the hex. So, this is male energy. This is female, male polarity, because these are electric. They are male, 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 male. Water is feminine and earth is feminine. So if you're Capricorn, you're magnetically polarized. If you're Aryan or Leo, you're electrically, positively polarized. It has to do with the way you think too. It has to do with how you accept ideas or how you... Electric people usually reject ideas. See how you can know your brothers and sisters and your family and your loved ones if you know your astrology. If you know you've got a child that's Capricorn, you'll know that they are uh, sensual. They are sensual people because they, um, as Carl Jung taught us, they are the five sense people Whereas the water people are the, are the emotional people. Notice that? The air people are thinking people. They're mind people. The spirit people are intuition. And how about that? Oh, that's fine. Leave that. Um, <clears throat> Female, male, 
female. I won't add the rest. You've got the idea, haven't you? Now, remember we said that's spring. It's also 6 o'clock, isn't it? So every day, when the sun comes up in the east, from 6 to 8, it's Aries time. We are polarised to the left brain. We're doing masculine, energetic things, going to work, for instance, or getting ready to eat. Taurus is the mouth. We wake up in the brain, don't we? The lights go on, we open our eyes in the head. Every day we wake up, there's the head of the man, there's the feet, right? That's beautiful music, isn't it? I've got some really nice graphs that I'd like to go through if I get, get some time. There you go, there's the hex. See, stuff like that. That's the cross that we've died on, and these are the Greek figures to, to, um, that amount to um, the, um, the book of Revelation and, and shows how all of this stuff is in the book of Revelation. It's all in the Bible. It's the lowest degree of life, the molecule, isn't it? It's ether is molecules down here. It's the lowest degree of life, and that's what we're made of, molecules. We're trying to lose the molecules. We're trying to go back. What, we, what we're trying to go back, remember, Yes is fire, the sun. Remember Jesus says, no one goes to the Father except through me. That's what it means. Everything in the Bible has wonderful meaning if you know the key. This is the key. <clears throat> That's the man. Only this guy's got Aries over here and Pisces going that way. It should, <laughs> I couldn't mirror image it, but anyway, there's the man. See how the head is here? Taurus is the neck. So we wake up in Aries every morning, then we go to eat, then we use our hands, Gemini rules the hands, the twins of the hands, the arms. Then Cancer, we do our Cancer thing, which is like uh, digestion and um, uh, other things. Leo is the heart, so that's bringing the, nutri the nutrients into the bloodstream. Virgo is the belly, so the the food that we ate in Taurus is getting digested here. That's fixed earth, that's mutable earth. You put fixed earth in your mouth and you mutate it in your belly. Do you not? Okay, and, I, and I'll show you how it locks with every single other thing. The more you look at that, the more you'll find. It never ends. This is the labyrinth. They call this the Mount Zion, the Temple of Solomon. This is the 12 pillars of the temple of my God in Revelation. It's King Arthur's round table, King Arthur being the sun and Guinevere being that mysterious woman, just like Jesus is the sun and Mary Magdalene is the mysterious woman. And Jacob had 12 sons and one mysterious daughter, Dinah, who got raped. The mysterious woman is the moon because as she goes around in every full moon, she has sex with the sun in every full moon because the woman is the receptive organ of our solar system where we come through, that is the ovaries of the solar system. The sun is the impregnator. The electricity impregnates the magnetism, just like any electric charge you put in a rock and it stays magnetic. The sun is magnetizing all those molecular bodies, and we included. So, what do we need to do now? So we see that Aries rules six to eight, Taurus, eight to 10, 10 to 12, and this is the key to understanding astrology. Why are Arians the babies of the zodiac? Because the sun is a baby. But here the sun is a boy. Here he's a man. Here he is a walking stick as he goes through the scales of Libra and is judged and is told to go down to Saturn because Saturn rules these two signs. Let me show you the rulership. So anyway, the son dies here and then he's born and he's a boy again. That's why Arians and Taurians and Geminis, they had that youth quality. You can see it. You can just see it. And then these guys are sort of more mature somehow. Not that these guys don't reach maturity, but they've got the child in them, the Arians. And they, and, and they all have the qualities of that season. And they all have the energy of the sun wherever, where it is. 
That's why Leo people, they love the limelight. They love the limelight. Mick Jagger, Robert Plant, the golden mane, you know, they love it. And they glow. They've got the heat of summer. This is midsummer. And look at that, fixed fire from two to four every day. What's the hottest part of the day? That's obviously where fire is going to fixate. Obviously fire is going to start here. Remember, cardinal is starting. Fixed is mutable. Uh, fixed is, is middle and mutable is descending. Pretty much comparable to a jet plane. To take off, that jet plane uses so much energy. That's cardinal. The cardinal people are very directional, very choleric. You can tell, I can, I can pick cardinals. I love picking cardinals, that's a cardinal. Yeah, you see them walking down the street. They walk straight. Well, I'm Aryan, I'm a ram. It's a ram. My mother always used to say, I know when you're coming, because you come at 100 mile an hour with the car. No one drives as fast as you do, because we don't like people in the way. Get out of the way. And, and Capricorns are the same. Cardinal, Librans are the same. Mr. Cameraman, bossy. <laughs> the Cancerians, even though they've got the water and the motherly aspect, they are still very one directional. Okay? And the fixed people, well, they're fixed. Yeah, they're so cool, especially the cats. Because the cats, the cats are feline. And then when you get a good book like this, there's the cats. Have a look at some of these guys. Banderas. Would you say that's a lynx or a jaguar or something like that? Look at Halle, Halle Berry. She's definitely a black panther. <laughs> Can you see the, the, the feline eyes? They have the feline eyes. They're the people you cut. You, you, when you see them, you say, you're a cool cat, and they understand what you're talking about, because they are. They're very feline. Their actions, everything. Aryans, Alec Baldwin, Hugh Hefner. Eddie Murphy is the typical magnetic um, Aryan. Very typical. There's the bovine eyes. Taurus, Michelle Pfeiffer. I mean, I see cow eyes. They're there. They are there. They're there. <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. How about uh, Scorpios? Scorpio is also a, an eagle. It's an eagle and a serpent. What you see with Scorpios is the beak. They've all got, they've all got beak. Sagittarius, look at the different, different mouth. The horse, equine. Big long face, beautiful big teeth. It's there. It is absolutely there. <clears throat> so this is how you understand astrology. This is the base of it now. You have the base. If someone says he's Leo, you know, oh yes, two to four, where fire fixates. Look at this. The fire signs. Let's just study the fire signs. There's cardinal fire. So God is three phase. Bang. So that... Remember I was saying the jet takes off, that's cardinal, then it coasts along, that's the fixed people. Then it descends, it mutates, that's the mutable people. They're flexible. They've got duality, Gemini, duality, Pisces, the two fish, Sagittarius, half man, half horse. Virgo, the child in one hand, the sheath of grain in the other. Duality, they are mutable people. They are mutable. They are more flexible than these cardinal people. And they don't like to hold on to things like Taurians. So if you notice, Cardinal Fire, of course fire starts at 6 o'clock in the morning. Of course it starts at, in the head. Of course fire starts in spring. Remembering the three cycles, right? Of course fire fixates here in, from 2 to 4 in the day. Some other dog days. The dog days are here. And the heart, the heart is the hottest organ of the body, isn't it? That's the heart. And then Sagittarius is where fire stops because it's the 21st of September. It's, it's, the, it's all over fire. There's no fire in this quadrant. Water, air, earth. 
there's fire in this quadrant, there's fire in this quadrant, there's fire in this quadrant. There's none here, so fire stops here, it starts there. Make sense? Well, what about if we look at Earth? Earth starts here, cardinal Earth, fixates here, mutable here. So, cold, freezing, freezing, Earth thawing out, that's where Earth starts. And then Earth fixates over here where you plant, that's the symbol of Earth, that's the Earth cycle fixed. And then it finishes when it gives its harvest over and the harvest season is ended and there's no Earth in this quadrant here. Same with water. Water starts here with cardinal water, cancer. Why would water start at, on the, the longest day of the year? Well, because there's a lot of heat here. This is summer. This is so hot that all the water on the earth has evaporated. It's maximum ev evaporation. Where's it got to go after it evaporates? It's got to come down, and it does. Fix water, Scorpio. Mutable water, and that's the end of the water cycle. So you see how the water atoms, the, um, the liquid has its cycle in three phases, like three-phase electricity. This is heaven and this is hell, remember? How do I know? Well, when you know your, your languages, you know what's going on. This is winter. Winter in Latin is... Does anyone want to help me with that? Inverno. Hell in Latin, or Italian, this is Italian actually, is inferno, infernal. It's the same thing. Hell is not hot, it's cold. This is... It's cold. It really is, but then, but then you will understand why it's all so hot and why it's red. Because look at that, remember that is your Scorpio, red? It's about there, isn't it, right? Notice that all the vital organs of the body are in the above part and they stop there at the genitive organs. From the legs, Sagittarius down, there are no vital organs. They are the eight hours in which you are sleeping every night, from 10 o'clock at night to 6 in the morning. There are no vital organs down there. They're all from here up. And there they are, from Scorpio to Aries in the Jewish menorah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stands of the Jewish menorah. This is their heaven, the Jews, the Garden of Eden. This is hell, inverno, inferno. And March is the first season because it was called Primus. Primus is number one. That's the original name for Aries, uh, March, Primus, Secundus, Tertius, Quartus, Quintus, Cestus, Sept. You wonder why September is called September 7, when it's the ninth month? It's not. It's the seventh month. The first month is March. The equinox. That is where the pulse starts in the head and it starts in spring where the fire begins. Everything comes from fire. Everything emanates from light. Out of the ether comes the light, electricity, and out of the electricity comes the other magnetic effects. This is the holy science. And notice, I was going to say, notice how I told you that this is red, the Red Sea, and this is green. Well, Everything, the Egyptians used to say, everything below the kidneys is red. There's the kidneys. Everything below the kidneys is red. So everything below the kidneys, Libra, they are the kidneys. Take note of these signs. Aries and Capricorn, the horned animals, are in the head. And then Gemini is the arms. Pollux and Castor, they're the twins and the two lungs. That's what Gemini stands for. Cancer is the chest. Leo is the heart and the blood and so on and so forth. And you can actually see it in the body language of people too. Tor Aryans have prominent heads. They have either have a long head or a prominent head. There's something about their heads. Taurians have got thick necks. It's the neck. 
Gemini people have got long arms that are just so good with it. You just look at a Gemini with their arms because Mercury rules. Mercury rules. Let me show you who the rulers are. That's the sun. The sun rules. The moon rules Cancer. Then from there down, it goes in order of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Saturn is Satan because Satan rules the underworld opposite to Jesus, his brother, his twin. In order of closeness to the sun, you see Mercury is closest to the sun, and then Venus, then Mars, then Jupiter, then Saturn. Thanks. Yep, no worries. So you see that Mr. Hot is over here, and his brother who kills him on the 21st of December is over here, Saturn. Saturn rules the underworld, Satan. Although it might be heavy. <laughs> yeah, it is heavy at the first time. You know, the, for the first time it's heavy. But, so sorry about that. But I'm trying to get you yeah, learning it's such a beautiful science. And when you learn this science, this is the most powerful thing that, to know who you are and serve the God within because you are an atomic deific unit of light. You're not a sinner. There is no sin. This is sin. This is good. Everything has resistance, even that light. It ohms. What's that? Well, it's a resistance. A trans you have resistors in, in all our electrical circuits because you can't just let electricity run ramp. It's got to be resisted. Every force, that ro uh, the roof is resisted by the walls. Otherwise, if they weren't there, the roof would fall in on us. So that's all it is. It's all it is. The light has to be resisted by the cold and the darkness. Now have a look at this. If you thought, oh, I'm stretching it a bit to say that the sun rules the kingdom of heaven. And why is this the, the kingdom of heaven? Well, it's the land, of, well, that's hell, but it's the land flowing of milk and honey. Here's the milk. The Milky Way galaxy runs through Taurus and Gemini and Sagittarius and Scorpio. That's the Milky Way galaxy. And here is the honey. There's an asterism in Cancer called the beehive. This is the milk and the honey. When the Israelites come up out of the promised land, they eat the Passover lamb, and they're in the land flowing with milk and honey. Well, it's the, talking about the sun. See, the sun dies here on the 25th of De 21st of December. On the 25th of December, it has its birthday. We call it Christmas. Christmas, why? Because the sun, when it goes on the horizon, you, if you watch the sun setting in summer over here, and then it, three months later in autumn it's over here, and then it, winter over here, and then it, it's six months from there to there, right? On the horizon it's 47 degrees because of the tilt of the earth at 23 and a half degrees. Let me get back on this side. <laughs> 23 and a half degrees. 23 and 23 make 47. So you can watch the sun walking on water, Jesus walking on water all year long. <clears throat> you like that, did you? I'll show you something you like much, much more than that because this is beautiful. It really is. I'm glad you're appreciating it, appreciating it like that. There's the, the ocean every morning and the sun rises. The sun is called yes, isn't it? Remember I told you that? How do I know? Let's be, uh, <clears throat> let's be really sure about ourselves, eh? This is how I know, because they tell you. What are those three letters inside the sun that have always been there to tell us the name of the sun? It's Greek. Any Greeks? I, E, S. Yes. The H in Greek, that we see an H, I, E, S, that S, that uh, is an I in Greek, it's called eta. We spell it like that, but it's I. Yes, remember? And the Jews, yes, and we say, sorry about that, that's a horrible why. Yes, and then we got the year out of that. Jesus is born of 
In Latin, the mare is the ocean. Mary, Maria, Jesus is born of Mary every morning. Jesus turns water into wine, the grapes growing, the water pouring down in summer, the grapes growing, 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 and then this is the bread season when the virgins get the harvest, this is the wine season. The sun turns water into wine every year. It's the natural cycle that we have. Now, if you thought I was stretching that thing about Jesus ruling here and the sun ruling here, in Aries, in astrology, we have every of one of these planets has its ruling house, its detrimental house, its exaltation house, and its fall house. How many people know this about astrology? No? You know about that? There are four things. This is, I'm pointing out the sun's ruling house, it's detrimental house where his brother Saturn lives, Mr. Cool. Of course that's the detriment of the sun. Of course it is. And why is this the exaltation of the sun? Because the sun has exalted. And here the sun is fallen. Well, guess what? The opposite of the sun, Saturn, has exactly the same opposites of ruling Houses, the opposite of the sun, exactly. That is the ruling house of Saturn, Aquarius. That is the detriment of Aquarius. That is the fall of Aquarius. And that is the exaltation of, of Aquarius, of Saturn. Did you? I didn't confuse you, did I? Okay. So that is the ruling of Saturn, detriment of Saturn, obviously. That is the fall of Saturn. That is the exaltation of Saturn, the opposite of his brother Jesus. Right, I keep losing where my duster is. All good, are you enjoying this? Yeah. Okay, lovely. Yeah, I thought you would. Uh, let me just show you one more thing. There's Sister Moon, that's Mary Magdalene. Jesus and Mary, and the Virgin, his mother, right next door, in the quadrant of summer. He rules in his kingdom with his bride. And the full moon that we just had, we call it Easter. We are right in Easter now. What are we celebrating? Well, Easter, which is this Sunday, is the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the 21st of March, every year. If you want to predict when Easter is going to be, just do that. The first Sunday after, every, after the first full moon, after the crossing. Why? Because the sun, is, the sun is getting married and conceiving in the sign of Aries with the moon because the full moon is over here in Libra, the sun is exalted and he's having sex with the full moon. In e it's the marriage of the lamb in the Bible. The marriage of the lamb, Aries. Because Virgo stretches right over to here in Scorpio. It used to be one sign. It, this was all the virgin. So when the sun exalted and the first full moon was in the virgin, that was Jesus being born of a virgin. And how do I know this? Well, the 25th of March, which is the day after my birthday, that's the day of the Annunciation. That's when Gabriel says to Mary, you will have a child and it will be the Son of God, the S-U-N of God, that is. It will be the Son of God. The 25th, well, that's interesting. Nine months later, the Son is born. That's the birth. We celebrate here the birthday of the Son, Christmas Day. That's got to be conception where it's conceived. And looky here. They have a, a festival over here called Pentecost, which means 49 days after. It's a 49-day period, Pentecost. That corresponds with the embryo becoming a fetus. Son is conceived here. A child is conceived here. Embryo becomes a fetus. In Virgo, the belly, the baby drops after six months to be born. This corresponds to the womb. Notice how the moon dies down here. That's the new moon, that's the full moon. 14 days, 14 days. Look at quarter moon, quarter moon, quarter moon. Aries Libra, Cancer, Capricorn. The moon does exactly the same as the sun. The sun waxes, the sun wanes. The moon waxes, the moon wanes. You don't cut your hair when the moon's waning, it won't grow. 
you cut your hair when the moon's waxing because it's growing. Growth, they're doing the same thing. It's all the same. That's Jesus and Mary Magdalene. Helen of Troy. Selene. Any L, L, L sound is the moon in a feminine. In masculine, it's the sun. Helios. That's the sun. This is the 14 day period you cut your hair. This is when you, this is when you grow your vegetables. Because the moon is transmitting the most reflective light from the sun possible. So of course you grow your, 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 your vegetables. My father used to do that. He's Calabrian from southern Italy. This is the menstruation cycle, 28 day, 38, 30 day cycle of the woman. Here is the bleeding. As the egg goes up into the ovary, and it, becomes, it takes 14 days for an egg to become mature in the ovary. It takes 14 days for the moon to become full. If the egg in the ovary is fertilised, then 270 days later, there will be a child born. If not, 14 days later, that egg will bleed. And that you cannot see the moon for two days in that period. That's the correspondence. You see, the, the woman is linked in with the moon and the sun is linked in with the male, uh, the sun. That's how it works. This is how the, it all works. The universe, ether, is a dodecahedron. Twelve. So this is, the, this is the mind of God, which Hermes says is the universe. The universe is mental. It has twelve potential latent energies. The seven, they are the creators or the manifestors of physical stuff. That is the physical part of God. The four are the four polarities that he uses, that in which the atoms go to their place. The three, the trinity, God being a trinity, that's the pulse, that's the, the phases. The two is the duality, and the one is the oneness of all. It's the relationship always, that is always there, of, of that equinoctial point. When the sun crosses that point, the next sign is always given to the lamb, no matter what hemisphere you're in. It's given to the lamb because it's cardinal fire. Everything comes from the start of light. Cardinal fire means where, th where light begins its journey. And then as photons crash into each other and, and, and collide and, and form molecules and atoms are attracted to each other and that light is refracted and, and whatnot, then light is what creates bodies. You're a light body. You are a child of the sun because you are a light body. We can't necessarily see all that beautiful glowing light, but it's all light. All of those atoms are light. It's all photons. It's all light. Why, well, I'll tell you how I'd like to finish it with Marcus Manilius's beautiful words, if you'd like me to do that. This is amazing. Uh, what boots it to assail oneself with, with self-reproach, to deprive oneself of benefits ungrudged by God himself and to renounce that mental, vi that mental vision which nature has bestowed? So he's saying to us, begging us and imploring us to look at nature in her naked glory to see who God really is, what God really is. And this is how he says we, we should do it. We perceive the skies, then why not the skies' gifts too? The mind of man has the power to leave its proper abode and penetrate to the innermost treasures of the sky. To construct the mighty universe from its component seeds, to transport the offspring of heaven about the places from which it came, to make for oceans farthest horizon descend to the inverted parts of the earth and inhabit the whole wide world. Now nature holds no mysteries for us. We have surveyed it in its entirety and are masters of the conquered sky. We perceive our creator of whom we are part and to rise to the stars whose children we are. Can one doubt that a divinity dwells within our breasts? and that our souls return to the heaven whence they came? 
Can one doubt, just as the world composed of the elements of air and fire on, on high and earth and water houses an intelligence which spread through it directs the whole? So too with us the bodies of our earthly condition and our lifeblood house a mind which directs every part and animates the man. Why wonder that men can comprehend heaven when heaven exists in their very beings and each one is a smaller likeness, the image of God himself? All other animals, and this is the most beautiful point, all other animals lie prostrate on the earth or submerged in water or else hover in the air. All alike have only sleep and food and sex for their delights. The strength of an animal is measured only by its size and its value by its limbs and since it has no intelligence it lacks speech too. The breed of man who rules all things is alone read equal to the inquiry into nature and power of speech, breadth of understanding and acquisition of various skills. He has left the open air for city life, tamed the land to yield him its fruits, made the beasts its slaves and laid a pathway on the sea. He alone stands with the citadel of his head raised high and triumphantly directing to the stars the, his star-like eyes, looks over more closely at Olympus, Olympus and inquires into the nature of Jove himself. Nor does, he rest content, nor does he rest content with the outward appearance of the gods, but probes into the heaven's depths and in his quest of a being akin to his own seeks among the stars. We, we alone, are destined to return to the stars. As long as we understand who the stars are, it's the macrocosm above and we are the ones below. Thank you.